Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with a, another video. This time I'm going to go through the whole of a key stage 3 topic, and this is structure and function of body systems. So I hope you uh, like the video, and remember if you do, please um, like uh, the video and subscribe to the channel. The topic starts off by looking at levels of organization. And what organization is, is it's a hierarchy of the different components that make up your body. And the smallest that we go in Key Stage 3 science is cells. Now, um, you'll have learned these in our last video in on Activate One, where we looked at specialized cells. Um, but cells are the building blocks of all organisms. And being an organism just means anything uh, that's living. Now, in our body, we are made up of billions of cells, and we call the cells that work together tissues. When we have the same cell working together, we call this a tissue. An example of a tissue could be muscle cells. When we have tissues working together, we call this a organ. And um, on the next slide, we're actually going to look at some examples of some different organs. For example, things like the heart and the lungs. But basically what an organ is, is um, different cells and different tissues working together for one function. When we have organs working together, these make organ systems. An example of a organ system would be the circulatory system. And the circulatory system is how we um, get the blood around the body and how it becomes oxygenated and um, passes all the way through your lungs and your heart and around your body. And when we have enough organ systems, we have an organism, which is just a, a living being. So you are an example of an organism. So is uh, any plants that you have um, knocking around your house. They are all examples of organisms. Let's have a look at some of these organs in a little bit more detail. And let's start at the top and work downwards. So the brain, the brain is situated in our head and inside the skull. And the main function of the brain is it sends electrical signals around your body, which basically instruct um, your body on how to move. And also it controls our emotions. And it also can send out some chemical signals, um, which can cause us um, to have some more involuntary responses like shivering and things like that. Then if we go down, um, you can see this organ here is called the heart. And what the heart's job is to do is to pump blood around the body. What the heart does is it works in what's called a double circulatory system. Uh, it pumps the blood to your lungs. That blood becomes oxygenated at the lungs. It comes back to the heart and then it will pump that oxygenated blood all around your body so your cells can get oxygen. Then underneath that we have the stomach and the role of the stomach is to start digestion of your food. Now, the way that the stomach does that is by adding uh, something called stomach acid, uh, which starts the breakdown of your food. Underneath that, we have kidneys, and the role of the kidneys is to remove waste from your body. So waste builds up around your body, things like urea, which we need to get rid of from the body, and the kidneys are key to that. Underneath that, we've got the bladder, which will store the waste until you need to remove it. 
Then we have the intestines, and this is where all the useful things um, from our food get absorbed into the bloodstream. After the kidneys, um, we have the liver here, and the liver is actually a really important organ. This is um, what controls a lot of the chemical reactions in our body. It also produces a substance called bile which helps us with our digestion. After the liver we have the lungs and the lungs is incredibly important to be able to breathe. We're going to have a look at the lungs in a bit more detail so I'm not going to go into that too much and then above that we have our thyroid and thyroid is what controls your metabolism basically how quickly you digest food. Now it's really important to remember that plants have organs too and basically like I said earlier an organ is a group of tissues that work together and um, some examples of organs in the plant uh, are the leaves this absorbs the sunlight we have the stem which holds the plant up and makes it really rigid and strong and we also have roots and the job of the roots is to absorb water and minerals from the soil. Now I said that we were going to look at the lungs in a bit more detail so let's have a go with that. Now uh, when we breathe in air it travels down our windpipe and the scientific term for our windpipe is the trachea. And then the air can break up down two paths. And this breaking up is called the bronchi. We have two, we have the left bronchi and we have the right bronchi. Then it breaks up even further into what we call bronchioles. And at the end of our bronchioles, we have tiny air sacs, which we call alveoli. And at this alveoli, this is where gases move in and out of our cells. Because the alveoli are surrounded by really thin um, blood vessels called capillaries. And what happens in these capillaries is oxygen moves into the blood. And carbon dioxide moves out of the blood and back into the lungs. Now there's an important reason why oxygen moves into your blood and carbon dioxide moves out and this is because of diffusion and uh, the reason why your blood wants oxygen is because um, a process called respiration happens inside your body and this is a chemical reaction and this is how um, us humans uh, and other animals get our energy. What we do is we convert glucose which is basically uh, formed from our food and we combine it with oxygen that we get from the air and this makes carbon dioxide and it also makes water. That's why if you put your hand over your mouth when you are breathing it's a bit damp isn't it and a bit moist that's because uh, you're breathing out some of that water that you've made in respiration. Now, if we look at the air we breathe in compared to the air we breathe out, you'll notice that the amount of nitrogen, which is the main component of air, it makes up 78% of the air. It stays um, exactly the same because our body doesn't really want nitrogen uh, traveling around it. We, we breathe as much in as we breathe out. This is different to oxygen. Oxygen we breathe uh, in makes up about 21% of the air and this goes down to around about 16% and 
carbon dioxide does not make up much of the air at all. Carbon dioxide only makes up around 0.04% of the air we breathe in, but it makes up around 4% of the air that we breathe out. Now, if we look at the actual process of breathing, which is different to respiration, breathing is just the act of air going into the lungs and air leaving the lungs. Um, the key players uh, in this are your diaphragm and your rib cage. What happens when you breathe in is the diaphragm flattens. The diaphragm is situated just under uh, your lungs and what happens is it completely flattens out when you breathe in and the reason why it does this is because it increases the volume inside your lungs also as well as the volume increasing the rib cage also expands in order to let air flow into it. So the increase in the lung volume sucks air into your lungs and this is the act of uh, breathing in. Breathing out is the opposite. What happens is instead of the diaphragm flattening, um, the diaphragm now relaxes and moves up. This decreases uh, the lung volume and it causes the rib cage to no longer expand, but the rib cage will get smaller. Now, what holds all of our body together is called the skeletal system. And your skeletal system is made up of 206 bones. With the largest bone in the body being the femur, which is found in your leg, and the smallest bone in your body being found in your ear and it's called the cochlea. Now the function of these bones is to protect your organs, support your body and also to make new cells. Now you might be thinking, well, how does your skeleton uh, contribute to making new cells? Well, if you look at the inside of a bone, it's not just the hard exterior. It, it is very hard on the outside. Um, ha however, if you go in um, a little bit, it's actually quite spongy. And if you get right to the center of a bone, you actually get to what is called the bone marrow. And this is basically unspecialized cells. And these cells can, can become any other cell in your body. And this is really important. For, ex for example, if you um, break something or uh, you lose a lot of blood, your bones are there to replace anything uh, that you lose from your body. So your bones are even more important than maybe you first thought. Now, when our muscular system uh, works with our skeletal system, we can move. And we're going to look at some of the different joints in our body now and some of the muscles uh, that help us to get around. So like I said, when we have muscle and we have bone, we can move. Now our bones are connected through ligaments and tendons and the ligaments and tendons just basically hold it all together. And the gap between two bones is called a joint. 
And there are two key types of joints that you need to know about for key stage three. And they are the ball and socket joint. And the ball and socket joints are ones that can move and rotate. Um, for example, if you think about your wrist, you can roll your wrist around. That has to be a ball and socket joint. Also, think about your ankles. You can move your ankles in circle without a ball and socket joint. That would not be possible. And we also have hinge joints. And these can only uh, move in one direction. Just think about your um, knee. Uh, your knees can only kick up and down. They can't um, really move from side to side without your hips moving. Uh, they can only move up and down. Also, your elbows, they are another example of uh, hinge joints. So here I've got examples of um, some uh, ligaments and some tendons as well. So here I've got a tendon because it is joining the muscle, which is in red, to the bone, which is uh, which just kind of has that creamy bony color. So tendons connect muscle to bone. Now we also have ligaments here and the ligaments connect the bone to bone. Now, muscles work in antagonistic pairs. Um, and what this basically means that when one of them relaxes, the other one contracts. An example would be your biceps and your triceps. If you feel your arm and you tense your biceps, you'll notice your triceps, the underneath of your arm, relaxes. However, if you straighten your arm, the triceps at the bottom um, will uh, contract as your biceps relax. And all this just basically mean is that muscles work in pairs. Now, I hope you have really enjoyed today's video. That is the end of the video. And remember, if you did, drop it a like and subscribe to the channel.